seems like as soon as the NBA starts to calm down a little bit, you know, after the whole Kyrie thing, everything just gets shooken up. Um, today, we just found out about an hour ago uh, via Woj uh, that the Lakers are finalizing a deal to send Minnesota D'Angelo Russell, Malik Beasley, and Jared Vanderbilt in trade, including Mike Conley, uh, and picks to Timberwolves and Russell Westbrook in a lightly protected 2027 LA first round pick to the Jazz. Also in a deal, Wanta Scott and Anderson and Damian Jones will be going to the Jazz and the key Alexander Walker to the Timberwolves. Um, and all players have been informed and the deal is fully complete. So this is kind of crazy. Um, right after, you know, Lebr- uh, LeBron had the, you know, what was it? Yeah, of course, breaking creative record, which is still great. Um, we get this, and I am honestly pretty shocked. I not expecting this um but yeah let's 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 go over some of this stuff uh first i saw this stat that was pretty crazy uh stat muse says d low and measly are averaging more made threes at 5.8 than russ patrick beverly dennis schroeder reeves and max christie combined at 5.6 so just these two have been a lot better at shooting (laughs) the three ball than that whole team and I mean get rid of Russ and add these two I mean it's definitely like a benefit uh Malik Beasley very high volume three-point shooter he shoots a lot and he makes a, a lot um maybe not the best percentage but he'll he'll definitely he'll shoot until it goes in for sure um <laughs> and D'Angelo Russell you know rel- like he used to play in the lake for the Lakers so I feel like it's kind of a homecoming for him it was his like rookies this is who he got drafted by and everything like that so i don't know it might be good for him because he's kind of i guess you could say used to the air, uh, area um but yeah so the big like the big two main pieces also i think jared vanderbilt's involved in this trade did i say that uh yeah okay so jared vanderbilt yeah it's part of the trade as well um so yeah, let's let's talk about the two main pieces, Russ and D'Angelo. What are you getting from D'Angelo by trading Russ? So let's go go over to good old basketball reference, and uh, I'm I'm only going to compare the stats this season because uh, it's I don't know I feel like we have a good sample size of the season now. You know, 54 games in, um, and like if you want to compare even the things like. Uh, in terms of who's going to be healthier, like, I mean, D'Angelo Russell's been played pre- play pretty much every game this season. Um, it started every game this season. So, I mean, D'Angelo Russell's not, you're not going to have to worry too, too much about health, health issues. Um, in terms of field goal percentage, he's up on that, on less attempts than Russell, so he's a lot more efficient. Uh, way better to, uh, two point percentage way better efficiency field goal way better free throw percentage um the the rebounds and stuff go to russ but you know assists he's at six uh russell's at seven uh steals they're pretty much the same uh and turnovers which is a big thing of russ uh has been it's at 3.5 almost four uh russ is at a manageable 2.7 um so yeah, and you know, comparing seventeen point nine, which is on a eighteen to sixteen points a game, you know, not nothing too too crazy, but you know, definitely you can see a difference. Um, with the Lakers, they're definitely getting a much more f- efficient guard and a much more reliable guard. Um, Russell Westbrook has these little like spr- sprints of him doing good. Like he he's had a couple triple doubles off the bench and all that. Um, but I don't know. It's, it's nice that they can have a good, solid starter, uh, as D'Angelo Russell has been for the uh, what's the name? Uh, Timberwolves this season, and yeah, it's also been, and before this trade happened, D'Angelo Russell said that he's gonna like he listed out like he listed as not gonna be playing uh, for personal reasons. I guess now you can tell that it's because of this, um, which is kind of crazy. Um, yeah, per a hundred percentage per hundred percent per a hundred possessions. There we go. Um, 
you could see that Westbrook's at about six turnovers, crazy. And then, I don't know if Russell Westbrook might be probably the better defender in some way. But, I mean, they both got the same amount of steals. Um, yeah, Russell Westbrook is... The one thing you can never take away from Russell Westbrook is the energy he provides. Uh, regardless of how he's doing, he's always going to be, you know, going full hard in, which is something you can never take away from him. But at the same time, this whole efficiency thing is what's been basically the big, like, you know, selling point for, and I'm sure Rob Palenka and the whole, like, Lakers um, team over there. Because, you know, they need efficiency to, you know, someone who they can depend on to, you know, take the load off of, you know, LeBron and Anthony Davis and, you know, everyone like that. Because, you know, you, you don't know what to expect sometimes from Westbrook. You don't know if you want to expect him to throw the ball halfway up into the crowds on a bad pass or if he's going to, you know, throw down a crazy dunk. Like, he, it's, he's very unpredictable. I feel like D'Angelo is a much more calm and safer bet. D'Angelo Russell is also eight years younger than Russell too so I mean it, it's I don't want to say Russell Westbrook's on the back end of his career um, but I mean he's he's definitely going up in age only four years behind LeBron um, and he's def and uh, he's, he's kind of the past couple of years it seems like he's get, kind of been getting passed around uh, throughout the league you know going from the Wizards to the Lakers Lakers now to the Jazz who the Jazz are now saying they want to get rid of, so he might now be going to the Chicago Bulls or the Clippers, which I'll get into a little bit. I'm sure there's another team involved. I can't really think of it right now. Um, but yeah, so big, 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 big bonus uh, for getting D'Angelo Russell. And honestly, I could see the Lakers, you know, making a little bit of a run. Honestly, if it gets, if if Russell can, you know, well, I can't, I can't say. It. D'Angelo, because they both have Russell in their name. But yeah, D'Angelo uh, is, you know, playing calmly. He, it might take him a couple games to, you know, find get in the mix, but honestly, you don't know what to expect, because out of nowhere, someone can just, like, pop off right away and just, you know, just snap right into it. Kind of like what Cam Thomas has been doing, you know, 40-point games three times in a row, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, let's talk about the other piece they're getting involved in this trade. Uh, Jaron Vanderbilt. So Jerry Vanderbilt is six nine power forward. Uh, you know, he's only played two hundred eighteen games. He's he he got drafted in twenty eighteen. He's he's a he's only played a year year uh, played in the league for four years. Um, so I mean, definitely definitely young. Um, so you know, he, he nothing. You're not gonna see nothing too too crazy from him. But, you know, he's always, he's a nice, tall presence on the court. Um, you know, being 6'9", has a pretty long wingspan. Um, you know, eight points, not going to jump shot off the chat, uh, stat sheet. But, you know, uh, you can see him having, you know, 56% from the field. You know, pretty efficient. Pretty His field, efficient field goal is 58, so not bad at all. Um, I, I definitely like this. I definitely like this trade. Um, I think he, he, he he's also a re- relatively good defender just for his height and you know everything like he's a solid role player which is I need which I think the Lakers the Lakers have some solid role players in the you know like Patrick Beverly being a defensive minded guard and um, Austin Reeves can do some good things for you Rui Hachimura has been pretty nice as whenever he came has been here uh but yeah, the def not not much negative to take away from uh, Jared Vanderbilt at all. Uh, his defensive rating is about a hundred thirteen, not which is to- not bad at all. Uh, the highest has been in X no. Second highest has been in his career, uh, but his offensive rating is pretty high too at one hundred twenty five. So definitely will not complain. Um, so yeah, I- I'm pre- like Rob Palenka did his thing. Um, about a couple days before the ed- deadline, which I feel like it's kind of getting crazy for a lot of teams. Uh, and yeah, and the other thing I saw was that, um, what I want to talk about is the Clippers being involved in the trade 
well being not being involved in the trade, but wanting Westbrook because Jazz are most likely gonna just send him off. Like they're not they don't want him. Because that's a lot of money, and the Jazz have been piling up a bunch of crazy amount of assets, which is really good for them. Um, they're very, they're they're gonna be a scary team in the future for sure. Um, but yeah, so the Clippers, the the Bulls, and I want to say there was another team interested in him. I, I cannot think of it right now. But yeah, the Bulls and the Clippers were the ones uh, in. Involved in wanting him, and the Clippers. I, I'm trying to think of what it would look like with the the other, like you know, they're they're playing the same city, L.A. L.A. Uh, but the Clippers with Paul George, uh, Kawhi, John Wall, Russell Westbrook. Um, and I'm trying, to, and I was trying to think of like what what possible reason would they possibly want him for? And if I had to guess, what it is is. A consistent like um you know a healthy guard or like a healthy point guard because I, I feel like they have not been a very like you know John Wall's been in and out the team itself has been not healthy you know Kawhi being in and out it's uh, and also Paul George being in and out like they 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 have a solid like as a full healthy team they're very very scary but I feel like they need some sort of like stability and sort of the health area and one thing you, as I said earlier, one thing you can never take away from Russ is his health. He's always gonna, you know, he always finds a way to stay in games. He always finds a way to stay healthy. Uh, whatever he's doing to condition his body is very, very good. So, I don't know. That's that's definitely one thing. And on, on terms of the Chicago Bulls, that'll be very interesting to see uh, him go a mix with Demar Derozan, Zach Levine, Vucevic. I don't even. I can't even imagine what that's like having like. That that the paint like every team defending would just have to like. Like the. The Chicago Bulls are not that great of a three point shooting team, and also adding Alex also having Alex Caruso and Lonzo Ball. I mean Lonzo Ball's been out. There's really been much of an update on him, um, but I I didn't even want like that that would be crazy. And t- the slashing with like Zach Levine, uh, Demar Derozan and Russell Westbrook like that's gonna give any team's big man the or centers like you know a headache uh a rough day at work for sure but yeah I, i'm definitely i'm definitely a fan of this trade uh and and i think the lakers took a big w on this i I think the utah jazz took a big w in terms of you know just getting the first round pick uh and yeah, the timberwolves get mike conley's i mean whatever cool um it's kind of funny because the the Timberwolves and the Jazz are playing tonight, and Mike Conley got traded to the uh, Timberwolves. Uh, so that's kind of awkward because it's like you're playing against your now team, and he probably know he knows this too. So I don't know what's gonna happen. Um, but yeah, I I hope you guys enjoy. Let me know what you guys thought of this, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.